1980 saw Carpenter return to his element, the fog. An unearthly fog rolls into a small coastal town, exactly 100 years after a ship mysteriously sank in its waters, is how the plot outline goes. The fog is a weird one. On paper, I probably am not supposed to like it, because it doesn't really work. For one, it's not scary. Carpenter wanted and failed to get the movie a PG rating, and his goal makes sense because since because of a lack of actual horrors, perhaps the movie would work better if packaged as a family horror movie, kind of like Poltergeist. The movie also has numerous protagonists and there is no clear main character among Adrienne Barbeau's radio host sitting atop the lonely lighthouse, Jamie Lee Curtis's traveller hitching a ride on both Tom Atkins' truck and Tom Atkins himself, in what must have been the quickest lay in film history, and numerous other folks here and there, though a lot of the characters end up in the same boat and band together during the movie's final few scenes, the bulk of the film does feel quite unfocused, as a result of the numerous characters. It's also quite a dumb movie, characters make awful decisions, and I was baffled at how a corpse got up and started walking, and no one saw any reason as to mention it again, or to say, hey, hang on, what the hell, a corpse has just gotten up and started walking. Is this not a big deal to anyone? And though there is an initial creepiness to the approaching fog and the fact that it leaves people dead after leaving, when you find out what's exactly in the fog, it is quite disappointing and shreds the movie of what little horror it had. There are holes in the story and things that don't make quite sense and it's quite a long while before things get going. With all that being said, I really like The Fog. Why? Well, mainly because of one thing it executes so well, atmosphere. Like I said, it's not a scary film, but boy does it have a spooky and chilly feel to it all. It did take me a while, I remember, to summarise and work out my mixed feelings on the film after my initial watch. My disappointment that it lacked the acuteness and scariness of Halloween, but it was still almost as entertaining and effective. Why? And the answer was atmosphere the feel of the film. Break it apart and analyse elements like the script, the acting, the costume design, the exhausted smoke machine, and you're left with a mediocre film, but the atmosphere, wow. It's quite simply the touch, the magic that is the craft of John Carpenter, which elevates the film. Destined to be obscure and lost in the overpopulated world of 80s horror, and it turns it into a product with identity, spooky, unnerving, mysterious, scenic and eerie are appropriate ways to describe this flick. In fact, it might just have the most effective atmosphere in any of Carpenter's movies. It's dripping with the gothic stuff. And like I said, it's not scary. The aura never steps into the field of dread and fright but it dangles in that zone where you actually enjoy it instead of being scared by it. I'm not gifted with the technical knowledge of the ins and outs of movie making so as to how the overall feeling of spookiness is achieved, but the music is definitely a factor. The music, again Carpenter's own, is very, very chilling and ghostly. It is well in contention to being the best Carpenter score if you listen to it in its entirety, and it goes so well with the film. The setting and location is also for sure a prominent reason. Antonia Bay, the lighthouse, the misty morning seashore, the waters, the small town feel, and of course the fog itself. All of these little bits feel like they have a history. The lighthouse is ominous, the sea's threatening treachery, and the fog's arrival, accompanied with the steadily escalating thumping of the school, is heart pounding. Oh, I almost forgot to give credit to cinematographer Dean Cundey, of course. A staple of Carpenter's filmography and one of the reasons why his films were often blessed with striking and accomplished photography. The Fog might be a minor film among Carpenter's more celebrated works, but it's one that cements his skill at setting the mood at the very least. There's a lot to love with The Fog. Films like this don't get made today. It's a cliche to say, and probably redundant since there's been a lot of recent good research of successful atmospheric horror movies like It Follows, The Witch and Hereditary. It's a good time for horror movies, but The Fog does leave you with a burning desire for the be to be more of an 
abundance of horror movies made with craft and care instead of filled with shock and CGI. 